Welcome to this lesson on arithmetic sequences. A sequence is a list of numbers in a particular order. So for example, 2, 4, 6, and 8, 1, 3, 9, and 27. You can probably see a pattern with these lists of numbers. So in the first example, I'm just adding 2. And in the second example, I was multiplying by 3 to get to the next number. Another thing I want you to notice is that sequences are always in brackets. And there are different types. There's infinite sequences, sequences that go on forever. So you're going to see the dot, 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 the ellipses at the end. And then finite sequences, they do not go on forever. So you won't see anything at the end, it'll just stop. And in this lesson, we're specifically going to talk about arithmetic sequences, which is a sequence created by adding or subtracting the same number to get to the next term. So for example, I have this sequence below, 6, 9, 12, and 15. So to get to the next term, you could probably see I'm adding 3. And the common difference is the number that is added or subtracted each time. To get to the next term in the sequence. And a common difference is represented by the letter D. So for example, 5, 10, 15, 20, my common difference I'm adding a 5 each time. And then 9, 7, 5, and 3, I'm subtracting 2 each time. So my common difference is negative 2. Okay, so let's try these examples. So number 1, is the sequence finite or infinite? This one would be finite because you don't see those ellipses at the end. So it stops. It doesn't keep going forever. Number two, find the next three terms in the sequence. So we have eight, two, negative four, negative 10. So I am subtracting six each time. So negative 10 minus six, that would give me negative 16. <clears throat> and then subtract another six, that would give me negative 22. And then finally, negative 28. Number three, what is the common difference in this sequence? So what am I adding or subtracting to get to the next term? See if you can figure that one out by yourself. An easy way to do that is just subtract 63 minus 54 to see what you're adding. And you should get nine. So I'm adding nine each time. So my common difference is nine. Number four, is this sequence an arithmetic sequence? So am I adding or subtracting the same number each time? So let's see, 108 minus 90, that gives me 18. 90 minus 72, that gives me 18. 72 minus 54, that gives me 18, so that would be a yes. I'm subtracting 18 each time. Number five, what are the next three terms in the sequence? So see if you can figure out what we're adding each time. And remember, an easy way to do that is take 4.9 and subtract 3.5. And you'll get 1.4. So each time I'm adding 1.4. So I need to take 7.7 .7 and add 1.4, which gives me 9.1. You can feel free to do this in your calculator plus another 1.4, that's 10.5. And then finally, 11.9. All right, and then number six, what is the common difference in this sequence? So this one is a little bit trickier, but you can still take the same tactic. I can take 2 thirds minus 1 third, and that's easy because they have common denominators, and that gives me 1 third. So each time I am 
adding one third plus one third. So my difference is one third. All right, let's talk about rules. Okay, let's talk about the rules for arithmetic sequences. So there are recursive rules and explicit rules. So let's start with recursive. So consider the following arithmetic sequence, 2, 6, 10, 14. Let's find the sixth term. Okay, so I'm going to make a table here. So I want the sixth term. And I already have some terms. I have, let's see, 2, 6, 10, and 14. And I want to go up to the sixth term. So let's find our common difference first. It looks like we're adding 4 each time. 2 plus 4 is 6, plus another 4 is 10, plus 4 is 14. All right, so let's continue on. Plus 4 more is 18, and then plus 4 more is 22. So finding a term this way is called the recursive rule. You're just counting up or down to the term that you want. And this is fine when you're finding smaller terms in a sequence. And there is a formula for this rule, even though we didn't necessarily need a formula, there is one, so let's go over it. So a sub n is the term that we want. a n minus one is the previous term. And then we already know d is the common difference. So what in the world does that even mean? So a sub n, that means the term that we want. So we want the sixth term. a just means the term, and we want the sixth one. And basically what we did to find the sixth term was we counted up to the fifth term and then added four more, and that gave us the sixth term. So the fifth term is the previous term, a to the fifth. That was 18. And then we added four more to that, which gave us... 22. Okay, so that's the recursive rule. Let's talk about the explicit rule. So what if we wanted to find the 100th term? It would take us forever if we continue on this table to 100. We don't want to have to do that. So there's a faster way, and it's called the explicit formula or the explicit rule. So the formula says a sub n, that's the term that we want. Remember, a just means the term, and n is the one that we want. So if we want the 100th term, it would be a sub 100. a sub 1 means the first term in the sequence. n is the term number that we want, so 100. We'll put the term a number that we want because it's a specific number. And then D is the common difference. So what are we adding or subtracting in the sequence? So let's write the explicit rule. So if we want to find the 100th term, that would be A sub 100. So that's going to be the first term. So let's scroll back up. I'm looking still at this formula here, this uh, sequence, sorry. So the first term is 2. So 2 plus n is the term that we want, the term number we want, the 100th term, minus 1 multiplied by the common difference. And in this case, we were adding 4 each time, so 4. So this will actually give us the 100th term in this sequence. So let's actually work this out. So 2 plus 100 minus 1, that's 99 times 4 calculator here. So 99 times 4, that gives me a 396. So 2 plus 396, which is 398. So that means if we kept going to the 100th sequence term, it would be 398. All right, so that is obviously a lot faster than counting up to the 100th term by adding 4 each time. Okay, so let's try a couple other examples. So we want to write a recursive rule for the following sequence, 4, 7, 10, 13, and then we want to find the seventh term. 
Okay, so I'm gonna make a table. You don't have to make a table, it just keeps everything organized when you are counting up using the recursive rule. So let's see, we want up to the seventh term. And again, the recursive rule is fine when you're finding a low term. I would say anything under maybe 10 or 15. After that, you're gonna wanna use the explicit rule. Okay, so we already have some of the terms. We have four, seven, 10, 13. So let's find the common difference. It looks like we are adding three each time. So my common difference is three. So 13 plus three, that gives me 16, plus another three is 19, plus another three is 22. So let's actually write that rule down. So if you wanna scroll back up, the recursive rule is a sub n, the term that we want. So we want the seventh term equals the previous term, so the sixth term, n minus one, plus the common difference, so plus three. So basically you take the sixth term, 19, add three to it, that gives you the term that you want, which is 22. So the answer is 22. All right, next, write the explicit rule for the same sequence and find a sub 84, so the 84th term. Okay, so we want the 84th term. And remember for the explicit rule, we want the first term, which is four, plus n, which is the term number that we want, 84, minus one, multiplied by the common difference. And in this case, it's three. Okay, so that would be four plus 83 times three. 83 times three, that gives me 249, plus four more is 253. So the 84th term in this sequence is 253. Okay, you can stop the video now and complete the practice.